Welcome to Making Sales Simple, podcast by Helen T. Bay, sales lady. So here we are, another episode of Sales Made Simple. Um, yeah, we're going to look at what's creating your low conversions. Um, basically, so you can go away and become aware of these things and try some of the suggestions that I've got to try and uh, increase your conversions in your very next sales conversation. The idea with this podcast is that you learn how to have fewer sales interactions. We often don't need more leads, more stuff. We just need to get better at converting the things that come across um, us anyway and the things that we're creating. So you earn more money for your business and yourself and your clients get what they came for quicker as, to, as too. So this is all highly actionable stuff. Um, as you go along, you can put it into practice, use this insight on your very next sales conversation. And what I would say is I'd invite you to schedule in some time after you've heard this so you can work on implicating it. Just 10 minutes or so just to reflect and see how you can weave this into your next sales interaction. This is where people have reported back that they win business. And I'm all about the value. I'm all about sharing this sort of, sort of stuff so that you can go and win more business without even paying me a penny. And then if you want to learn about how you can implement this in your business and go and take that to the next level and get that next phase of growth, that's when we can talk about working together. So yeah, let's get into it. So really we're taught in business that a conversion rate of 20 to 30% is good. Uh, I believe it can certainly be higher, more like 70%. And I'm going to show you what might be getting in your way and reducing your conversion levels. So what I want you to do first of all is go back over the last 10 sales conversations that you've had. Um, maybe it's over this month or the last couple of months. And write down physically on a post-it note or a piece of paper how much money you would see in your business bank account if two people had converted. So just your average fee, your average product cost, whatever it is, if the last 10 sales conversations, if the last two converted, what figure would that be? And then just underneath it, what if seven of them had converted? What would that mean in terms of money in your business bank account? Physically write it down. So you've got two figures there. And there will be a contrast, there will be a big difference. I did this exercise, I was like, holy shit, that would have been like a lot of money, a lot of impact I could create, a lot of people that I could help. Oh my God, how can I get more towards 70% conversion instead of 20%? That's what I did at the very start of my business. And doing this work can flag up quite a lot of emotion, but it's how you manage that mental state to be able to carry on and, and do this and move through it and move through the, 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 the pain that we can sometimes see with this. Because the faster you're able to do that, the faster you know and evaluate where you need to put the effort and the more money you can make, the more people that you can help. And think about that, you know, you were helping two people with a 20% conversion or you're helping seven people with a 70% conversion. Which one do you wanna be doing more of? How would it feel if you were able to help those extra people? So what I often hear happening when we drill down into it is that we don't in fact need more leads. We've got opportunities, we've got things coming to us. What we actually need is the ability to convert more. We've got conversion issues rather than lead issues. It may seem easy to just go and buy more leads or buy more opportunities or work on getting more through the, the funnel, but there's actually not an economy of scale there. There's not for a profit building business that that makes no sense because you could get 10 more leads and have 20 leads and still only be converting four. Um, it's actually going to be more efficient work and effort to work on what's needed to up the conversion rate. It's going to be so much more profitable and you'll feel so much more control in your business if you can repeat it. So we've got a seven out of 10 potential wins or two out of 10 potential wins. Go and work on converting the two to the seven. It's much more effective than going and getting 10 more leads or 20 more leads or 30 more leads. So let's go. Here are the five most common things that I see happening within sales conversations that really hurt your ability to convert. Now these can be subtle. There's lots of nuances and levels to them. You might be making your first money. You might be at sales mastery level. You might be like sales ninja level. It's okay. At any level, you can start to recognize these showing up in your business. And I'm going to show you what you can do instead. 
So the first thing that happens is you make assumptions about your clients before or during a sales conversation. Things like they're not going to be able to afford this, they're not going to be the right fit, they're not going to show up, they're not going to buy at that price. When you do this, you're out of service mode. It has become about you and not the client. And you never know what's in someone's bank account and if they can afford it. It's just not something that we really need to be concerning ourselves about. It isn't the question that we should be asking ourselves because it creates judgment. It creates judgment of the client and judgment of yourself. Now imagine if you showed up to a sales conversation with me and I had that thought, I don't think they're going to be able to afford this. How would you feel? What experience do you think you would get from me? You might say something related to money and I'd be like, yep, yeah, there we go. That's it. Told you they couldn't afford it. Right, we're out. We're off. And we close the conversation down and we just get out, there, out of it as soon as possible. Your attention needs to be re remained completely committed to service your clients without making assumptions and without judging. We hear it sometimes in people's voices and go, oh, they're really busy. That must mean like we just got to get off the phone. Just ask them, you know, um, is now a good time to talk about this? I've rung to talk about this. And if they pick the phone up and they continue the conversation, they might have harassment in their voice. That might just be how they sound. It's not our job to make assumptions about things. They, will, they have what we call agency. They have responsibility. They have decision-making ability to say, actually, I do want to talk about this, but can we do it another time? We just don't need to make assumptions. So when we do that, we don't feel motivated. We don't feel committed to go the extra mile. We don't explore what's been said. We don't get curious. We just shut down and we're out of service. They're gonna say something. It confirms our thinking about them, our prior thinking, and we just let them go. And they sense it too, they know. And they'll just be a no thanks anyway. So it happens, there's no judgment. This happened to me last week. I made assumptions that someone would need to go and check on something with someone. <laughs> And they didn't, they had the decision-making ability themselves. So can you see how we actually create our own objections here? I was like, oh yeah, maybe you wanna go and check with that business partner. And they were like, oh yeah, maybe I think I need to. When they just literally told me about two seconds before that they had full decision-making ability. All I can say is I was tired, my brain wasn't focusing right, I was just on autopilot, I wasn't present. So we can see how that hurts our conversion rate. Now what I actually did was I called that person back and I said, can I just check? Are you checking with your business partner to see if it's okay? Or are you informing them that you are actually going ahead and you've made this decision? Should I raise the invoice? Are you ready to work with me? And so we had that conversation there. So. I actually have done this and I keep doing this because it's always continuous work. It never just goes away, but I catch my assumptions now. I write them down on a piece of paper and I start getting aware of what they sound like. And then I decide what's gonna be more helpful for me to believe about my clients. So I genuinely be believe they are resourceful. If they want to work with me, they will find a way for that to happen. I don't need to know what's in someone's bank account. I don't know how, what options they've got. I just know that if it's compelling enough, which it will be, they will, nine times out of 10, find a way of working together. That's all I need to concern myself with. So what's gonna be more helpful to believe instead of the stuff you've got written on that list? Now, even if you know it, you know, oh, I know what assumptions I'm making, write them down because it makes it real. You can actually see it. The second thing is you think objections are a problem. And this comes up so many times where people think that they've said this, they've said they can't afford it, they've said that now's not the right time, it must just mean something about me, about my offer. Um, I think objections are just unanswered questions. It's just thoughts that people have got that just float up and it floats out of people's mouths. Our humans' brains are programmed to look at the risk of the situation. So of course they're gonna have some questions, for sure. But we panic, we worry something's gone wrong, you don't know what to say, you don't wanna seem pushy, so we just leave it. And there is a theory that in a sales conversation, there's only one person that can be sold to at any one time. Now either you're buying all the reasons why they can't do it, or they're sold on the possibility that actually they could get what you're selling, the result that they want, and they could actually buy it now. So for example, somebody said to me a couple of months ago, I need to invest in my management team first. 
Now that sounds really reasonable, sure, they could do that, but just, okay, walk me through it. Tell me a little bit more about how that would work. I'm not fully sold on, on all those reasons. I don't want them to delay making more money. So could we explore that? Could we just have a look at it running side by side or what would happen if you invested in your team first versus looking at the sales instead of just going, oh, right, yeah, that seems reasonable. I'm just gonna take it as gospel and I'm gonna exit out of the conversation. So you can just, ask someone, can we just explore that? Can you expand on that a little bit more? So the third thing that happens is we let them off to the hook to go and think about it. And what I mean by that is it sounds so reasonable. I just want to go and think about it. And that might be how you make decisions. And if it is, you need to go and check with your partner. Um, of course, when someone says that to you, you're going to agree with it. It's going to be really agreeable. You'll let them go off for a week or two or a month, speak to other people. And I would bet nine times out of 10, they were a secret no anyway, and they just didn't want to tell you. And you didn't want to explore it because you feel awkward on some level. We think we need more time, but we don't. What we actually need is more information. We need more clarity, and that doesn't come from allowing more time to pass. You will have done this yourself. It sounds good, I'm gonna go and think about it, but really it's a secret no. You just don't wanna spend the money in that way. You don't wanna do the work in, in is that how they've suggested it. You want to buy a different product, and you just don't really wanna say no to someone's face. But what happens is they never re-engage because it was always a no. But when you think it's a yes, we allow that to happen and then our pipeline becomes full of false maybes, which is just no fun. So you can just ask them, do you have reservations about moving forwards on this? They might want to spend the money, but in a different way, and that's fine too. And then the fourth thing that happens is you're trying to control the conversation or the outcome in some way. Now, this happens quite a bit. Salespeople and business owners are brilliant at doing this. It's the mental rehearsing of what people are going to say. We feel 100% convinced that we just know what someone's gonna say. Um, we just know then what we're gonna do, and then this is gonna happen, and then that, and then this catastrophe, and that, and then it'll all be an absolute mess. Whenever we go through that mental rehearsal process, we are always wrong. Like 95% of the time we are just wrong uh, because we never truly know what's going to happen, what people are thinking, what they're gonna say, but our brain is 100% convinced it does now. So when you pre-plan or rehearse in your head, I really want you to just throw that away because you can't control the conversation. And when you try to do that in a sales environment, in a sales interaction, where it's on the phone, face to face, direct message, that's when people feel sold to. That's when they feel you're trying to steer them somehow down a path and they don't like it. You don't like it when it happens to you either. So ask the questions, become more consultative. I want you to write down three questions that you could ask in a sales conversation that you haven't been holding back from, that you've not asked before, that would just elicit a little bit more information that you could get underneath the hood of what people are actually saying and what they mean. So they'll say one thing, it's too expensive, but what they actually mean is, I'm really scared about spending the money in case I don't see the result. Do you see what I mean? It's two different things. And when we start answering the question about money and cost, we're not really answering their true objection, which is, I don't know if I can get the result, if, I can get, if it's repeatable, if I can replace the money, if I spend it with you. So the only way that you can get past this is number one, troubleshoot it. So write down some different questions. And then to keep it simple. This is what we, we get really hung up on, what we're gonna say, we overcomplicate it, we get really scared and nervous. The only way you can get past this process is to do the thing that you're worried about doing, like asking those additional questions, asking for the business, and then give your brain as much physical evidence as possible that you can do the thing. And yes, stuff might happen, people might react, they might get triggered, but the evidence is, is when we keep going and doing the things, it might happen, but we are going to be okay. So that's how you get past that. And the last reason our conversions are low um, is that we do not ask for the decision at the end. 
such a simple point that trips us up. We do all that work. Imagine how much money and time and effort it's taken to get someone on a call, leaning into you, talking through the objections, and then we just go, yeah, well, you just let me know then. I'll leave it with you. Just, just let me know what you want to do. No. Great, this sounds excellent. When would you like to get started? Should I send you the invoice? We can make assumptive closes where we ask for the decision. We assume it's going to happen. So would you like to pay up front or would you like to pay monthly? We can just ask them really simply, what are your thoughts now on moving forward? Should I send the invoice? Just be really quiet, see what they say. But when you don't do this, they're gonna go away and they're gonna figure out maybe five or 10 other reasons why now is not the right time, it's too risky, they might see another solution that just seems a little bit easier and you're not gonna be there to help them, they're just gonna drift off. And of course it's gonna feel fearful and risky for them. People generally are scared of parting with money, especially when they've got a house, kids, a business, because we're so heavily focused about the risk that's involved, we don't look at the likelihood of actually achieving the result. So by asking them these questions, you get the unsurfaced objections, if you like, the unanswered thoughts, the things they've not said will start floating up. And when they're in that stage of indecision, they're not fully committed. They might be like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea, but not enough for me to go and press send on a bank transfer and like pay the money. They're not backing themselves. And there's no better way of backing yourself than paying an invoice, especially one that's gonna push you financially, it's gonna push you emotionally, it's gonna have you thinking differently. That's gonna elicit a really different result, but it's scary. So ask them, what would you like to get to, to happen next, what, what would you like to happen? Would you like to get started? Can I send you an invoice? You're probably going to get another objection. And again, it's not a problem, just be open to answer that. So who can identify with some of those things? I know I've definitely done them. They happen on repeat for me. They phase in and out, different stages of business, they float up again. So you make assumptions, you think objections are a problem, we let people go off and think about it and don't explore th things with them. You're trying to control the conversation or outcome somehow. Um, and the final thing is, is we don't ask for the business, uh, the decision at the end, we let them go. So what I want you to do is, again, there's no judgment here. Like I said, I've done all of this. I will continue to do these things, of course. I want you to be really aware of yourself, becoming aware of these things. That's how you catch yourself as you're doing something. And then just apply some of the tips that I've given you in this podcast and see what happens. Are you able to take conversations a couple of steps further? What does that feel like for you? What response does that give your uh, potential client? How did it feel? doing it that way rather than I really need to make a sale and I've got to pursue this person and get them to say yes. It's not how we do sales. So make sure you follow uh, for more episodes um, which are designed to make sales easier. Share actionable tips and then you can put these things into practice on your very next sales call. So I'll see you on the next episode of Making Sales Simple. Thank you for listening to Making Sales Simple, a podcast by Helen T. Bay, the sales lady. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Spotify for more.